Hi everyone, great to have you on this Monday morning as we continue in Psalm 86. Just as we followed on from last week, we did verses 1 to 7. This week we're doing verses 8 to 10. And I'd really encourage you during this week to read through just those three verses. Jot down thoughts. Uh, when I ask questions, comment in, in the description below. Uh, it would be great to interact with you. But Psalm 86, written by David, uh, and some call it a, a mosaic of praise. Uh, almost like David took bits and bobs from other psalms that he wrote uh, to compile this prayer. But what we do get the sense of in this, in this psalm is that it's a very personal prayer. Uh, written at a time of trial, Saul is after him, wants to kill him. And he starts off by going, he says, I'm depressed and I'm begging for help. God, I'm, I'm poor and needy. I need you. Uh, and last week we spoke about faith and trust. Uh, in, in, in David's writings, we just get the sense that he says, you know, our faith is dependent on how much we actually trust God. That we can only truly be faithful if we fully trust. Some spoke of faith and action. And I know those verses just really spoke to some of you because we don't often see David as a depressed person. But here he is in this trial, this difficult time where his life is on the line and he reaches out to God. And I want to, before we go into the verses for this week, I just want to read a different version, a translation of the Psalm 86 verse 1 to 7. For those who didn't maybe read it last week. Bend an ear, God, answer me. I'm one miserable wretch. Keep me safe. Haven't I lived a good life? Help your servant. I'm depending on you. You're my God. Have mercy on me. I count on you from morning to night. Make your servant, give your servant a happy life. I put myself in your hands. You're well known as good and forgiving. Big hearted to all who ask for help. Pay attention, God, to my prayer. Bend down and listen to my cry for help. Every time I'm in trouble, I'll call on you and confident that you'll answer. So that's how verse 7 ends off that we spoke of on Friday. Uh, but what I love about verses 8 to 10, it changes gear. It kind of goes from a last resort uh, to what he knows to be true in the midst of crisis. So in the midst of this plea and this cry for help to God, he changes it. And listen to these words as it continues in verse 8. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Quite a change from verses 1 to 7. And so we're going to look at those verses 8 to 10. But for tomorrow uh, and for the rest of today, uh, I want you to just go through verses 8. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. Why is God incomparable? You know, what makes God different to you? And how would you answer that if somebody asked you that question? Why is the God you serve different from the rest? Well, let's discuss this and tomorrow we'll continue as we go through these verses. Let me pray for us. Lord, just as we start out today, uh, and this reminder of David, as David cries out, he says, there is none that is compared to you. Lord, today as we think upon that verse, uh, bring things to mind. Help us to know you more, so that we can, we can show this world who you are. So Lord, thank you for your word, and have your hand over us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Be blessed.